University Challenge. And asking the questions, not Jeremy Paxman. Well, he didn't go to St Anne's, so he didn't get the gig. I'm Martha Carney, and welcome everyone joining us this evening to the St Anne's Giving Day University Challenge. And like the television programme, we're going to be pitting a team of current students against a team of St Anne's alumni. And I'm delighted to be chairing this event, which is being held as part of St Anne's Community Week and Giving Day, which is an important fundraiser for us. I'm now going to pass over to the alumni team to introduce themselves, beginning with the team captain, David. Hi, I'm David Royal from Newcastle. I read Modern Languages French, graduating in 2011. Thank you. And Rebecca? Hi, I'm Rebecca Probert from Exeter. I graduated from St Anne's in 1994 with a degree in jurisprudence. And Gina? Hello, I'm Gina Moore. I'm from London. I came up in 1972 to read Grapes. Uh, I finished two years on the mods and then I changed to PPE and finished in 1976. I sometimes wish I'd changed from Grapes to PPE. It would have been more useful in my current job. And finally, Lam. Hi, everyone. This is Lam Jar from South Sudan. I joined St. Anne's in 2021 and graduated, uh, graduated last year. 2022 for Masters in Refugees and Forced Migration. Nice to see everyone. And nice to see you too. And now over to the student team and we'll begin with their captain with Aisha. Hi, I'm Aisha Chakravarti. I matriculated in 2021 and I study PPE. And Elliot? Hi, I'm Elliot Lucan. I also matriculated in 2021 and I'm studying medicine. And let's move on to Matthew now. Hi, I'm Matthew. Uh, I also matriculated in 2021 and I'm studying English language and literature. And finally, Paige. Hi, uh, I'm Paige. Uh, to, for a change of pace, I matriculated in 2020 and I study classics. Great. And I should also say we've got Jason Fiddeman, Alumni Relations Manager, who's scoring behind the scenes this evening. And hello to all the students and staff joining us from the St Anne's College Lecture Theatre. And as I was saying at the outset, the event is to raise awareness of St Anne's Giving Day and to raise funds for four key areas, graduate support, international hardship, outreach and student support. And you can donate online at www.stannes.givingday.co.uk or by emailing development at stannes.ox.ac.uk. Information is going to pop up on the screen and in the comments box. Now, if uh, anyone's unfamiliar, I'm going to go over the rules for this evening. And it's a slightly um, different uh, version to the TV show, just to make it more possible online. Well, oh, this is all quite retro, isn't it? A reminder of um, lockdown doing online quizzes. Well, each correct answer is worth 10 points. For each question you answer correctly, there's a bonus round for that team. These bonus rounds consist of three thematically linked questions, which will be answered in collaboration with your team. And each of these questions are worth five points each. Team members can buzz in any time, and we've got quite a kind of a clever mechanism for the way that we're going to be doing that, but I needn't trouble you with all of that. Um, there isn't auto cue, so I'm just moving my script up a little bit. Uh, they're going to be typing B or buzz in the chat box. If panelists buzz before a question's been finished, i.e. interrupting the question and the answer they provide is wrong, as you'll know from the television programme, five points will be deducted. Throughout the challenge this evening, for those of you watching, have a go at home yourselves. See what score you can get. Remember, this is all for a good cause, so please do log on to St Anne's website and donate if you can. Now, I'm going to move on to the uh, very first question, which I've got written down here on my iPad. So, your very first starter for 10. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, which freshwater lake is the only one in the world to contain ocean life? So I'm nobody's buzzing yet. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, which freshwater lake is the only one in the world to contain ocean life? Nobody's even going to have a guess. Um, David, oh sorry, Paige, go for it. Um, Lake Superior. 
It was a good guess, but I'm sorry, um, Paige from the student team, that's not the correct answer. So I'm gonna pass over to alumni. Anybody there like to hazard a guess? David? Lake Huron? Not Lake Huron, I'm afraid. The answer is Lake Nicaragua. So I'm going to, we're not uh, onto the bonuses yet. You've got to answer another starter. And so our second attempt at a start for 10, where are the most ancient coffee forests found? David from alumni. Kenya. Uh, it's, the answer is not Kenya. Uh, you didn't interrupt me, so you don't lose any points, but I'll pass it over to students. Anybody there? Aisha. Um, Ethiopia. Correct. Uh, the Ethiopian Plateau or Ethiopia. Well done. Ten points for you. And now your team, and you may confer, uh, these are your bonus questions, and um, they are on coffee, not surprisingly. So what's a gourmet subspecies of the Arabica varietal? Um, I don't know. I, I know coffee. Uh, anyone know anything about coffee? I'm not too familiar with coffee strains. Um... Yeah, Arabica. Uh, I, ju I just know Arabica, that's it. No more strains than that. Should I just guess? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Colombian. Well, oh, bad luck. It's uh, bourbon, like, like, like the whiskey. Okay, here's your second bonus question. Which is the most widely grown coffee bean? Mm. I would hazard a guess at it being Arabica. <laughs> I'm going to assume that it wasn't the same one as the. Oh, yeah. sorry. Um, nominate Chalice, I guess. As, as in, like, this is me discussing. So if you guys oh. have any of it, sorry. Yeah. I don't know. Should we uh, go with that? Yeah. Okay. Nominate Chalice. Uh, I would like to say Arabica, then, please. And Arabica is the correct answer. Yeah. So you get five points for that. And uh, the third bonus question which country produces the most coffee? Um, I think it might be Cote d'Ivoire. No, that's chocolate. No, that's chocolate. Maybe Brazil or something, because it's the same kind of latitude and it's quite a small country. So Brazil sounds good, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, Brazil? Is the correct answer. There's a very old song. There's an awful lot of coffee in Brazil. <laughs> I was coming along to that, but well done for not going with Cote d'Ivoire. So uh, well done, students, at getting ahead on the scoreboard. And now we return to our um, starters. What is the capital of Switzerland? And that is, I think is uh, Royal, am I right? Oh no, what do we, Sander, who, who do you think is the, yes, yeah, Royal alumni. Bern. Bern is the correct answer. And we move on to your, uh, bonuses uh, for that, so you can confer. What is the name of the largest lake in Switzerland? Mm. Lake Geneva. Yeah, I'm not sure. A lot of lake knowledge required so far in this quiz. <laughs> uh, you're not going to get very far if you're slagging off the questions. I'm just saying, Jason's doing the scoring. He's not going to think very kindly. Um, what what other lakes do we have? Geneva, Geneva. Zurich. Hmm. Just might go Geneva. Okay, nominate Moore. Lake Geneva. And Lake Geneva is the correct answer. Well done, five points. And your second bonus question is: In what year was Switzerland founded? Hmm. And I'm going to accept to the nearest decade after some discussion beforehand, which seems quite strict to me. But anyway, we'll see. Where yeah, was Switzerland founded? Any ideas, team? What what century do we think it is? I'm thinking early, um, 16th century. Yeah. 1555. Nominate Probert. 1545. Is that your final answer? Yeah, that was a nominate. I'm afraid not. It was 1291. <laughs> so 
unless I said within 500 years, <laughs> you would not have got that right. So, <coughs> and um, the uh, third question, this is more in my um, specialist subject. What traditional Swiss dish consists of melting cheese over bread, meat, and vegetables? Raclette. Yeah, I was going to say raclette or fondue. Yeah. We've got no. raclette. 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 Raclette is the correct answer. Uh, well done. So you've um, on those bonuses. Okay, I'm just going to have a sip of water before we go into our... This is our next starter for 10. So remember to buzz and thank you, um, Paige, for putting the line between the rounds. That, that does help me a lot. Okay. Um, start of a 10. Who wrote the libretto for Mozart's Don Giovanni? Nobody hazarding a guess. Who wrote the libretto for Mozart's Don Giovanni? Mm, a lot of baffled looking. All right. Okay. Um, I will give you the answer then, and we'll move on to um, uh, another start around. The answer is actually Lorenzo da Ponte. Okay, so your next starter for 10. Who played Elizabeth Bennet in the 1995 BBC adaptation of Jane Austen's novel, Pride and Prejudice? Uh, Jennifer Erler. Excellent. Well done. So you 10 points for that um, starter. Better on um, Jane Austen, or at least Telly Jane Austen than on Mozart. OK, so here are your bonus questions. And um, we're going to go back. Oh, well, no, I think I'll stay with the uh, with the Austen ones to say with thematically. So your first bonus is when was Pride and Prejudice published? What year? I think it's 1811. Yes. I mean, obviously, don't trust me on dates now because I may be three centuries out. But <laughs> I think you're going to be much closer with this one, Rebecca. Uh, yeah, we'll go 1811. Okay, the answer is 1813, and but you're so close. I'm going to give you the points on that and, and risk around with Jason. Uh, for your second bonus question, in the 2005 film adaptation, who played Elizabeth Bennet? Uh, so that's Kira Knightley. <laughs> You're that's very good. You're watching one. <laughs> Kira Knightley. You're watching a lot of TV, Austin, right? And uh, but you get your five points. And thirdly, uh, back to Jane Austen herself. In which English cathedral is Jane Austen buried? Uh, it's in Winchester. Yeah, Winchester Cathedral. Winchester Cathedral is the correct answer. So well done on those uh, bonuses, alumni. Now, um, your starter, a new starter for 10. So remember, no conferring. Who is the author of A Spy Among Friends, published in 2014? I'll give you a little bit of a clue. I mean, it's a recent television. OK, yes, um, Royal alumni. Hilary Mantel? Not Hilary Mantel. And I'll pass it over to students. Aisha? Um, Chakravarti, students. <laughs> I think it might Ben McIntyre? Very good is the correct answer. Well <laughs> done. And also for you TV fans, is a very good... Uh, ITV series um, based on the book that I do recommend. So not that you need any more tips on TV watching, judging by what you've all been up to. Here are your bonus questions. So um, based on like, the subject matter of A Spy Amongst Friends, who were the Cambridge Five? One point for each name guessed correctly. Well, they need names. Yeah, I must admit, I've only seen it on a bookshelf. I haven't actually read it. Um, <laughs> it's just knowledge that imprinted on me, so I couldn't tell you. Anyone have any any guesses at all? This one, three, Can someone just name some names? Random names. Okay, <laughs> nominate Luke and name some names. No. <laughs> uh, David, that's a good name. <laughs> okay, look, I just, okay, I'm, I'm going to help you a tiny bit. The book is called A Spy Amongst Friends. So it's the Cambridge Five Spies. Um, yeah. I just don't remember the names. 
Um, is this the um, uh, was Roald Dahl one of them? Uh, okay, look, I just pass it. Okay, I'm I think, but I think, pass. I think, pass. Yeah, okay. pass. You'll have you'll now have to read the book or watch the television yes. series. But it's um, Burgess and McLean. Does that ring a bell? Donald McLean, Guy Burgess, Kim Philby, Anthony Blunt, who was the Queen's picture um, keeper and uh, John Cairncross. Okay, I'm going on to the next bonus. I don't think this is going to go well. No, What's the name so. of their controller? <sighs> Something Nicholas. Russian. <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> Something Russian. That's a very good idea. Something yeah. spying from Russia. Union, so. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to prolong the agony. Yuri Modin. And then finally, uh, your last bonus question, and this might be easy for you, which John le Carre book and later film novelised Le Carre's experiences of the spy revelations? Um, you broke up a little bit there for me, at least. Sorry, sure, I'll repeat it. So Thank you. which John le Carre book, uh, later television series and film, um, was based on Carrie's own experiences of the spy revelations, the fictional account. I think you've, if I've ever seen a John McCarrie book on a bookshelf. Um, yeah, never read any of his books. Okay. No. Is Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy his? Yes, Aisha, you dug deep. <laughs> you dug deep. It's Wonderful. <laughs> Rousing on bookshelves has paid off. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Okay, and uh, we're moving on to your next uh, starter for 10. In which famous British royal residence did Queen Victoria's husband, Prince Albert, die? Matthew? Osborne House. Do you know, that's what I'd have guessed, but I'm afraid that's the wrong answer. And um, pass it over to alumni. Okay. Any British royal residents? Gina. Um, Gina Moore. Bal Balmoral. Not Balmoral, I'm afraid. It was Windsor. Windsor Castle. Okay, so we'll move on to our uh, next starter, um, starter for 10. In the BBC television show Doctor Who, what was the name of the actress who played the 13th Doctor? So like, you're all buzzing like crazy here. Um, I'm actually going to need, uh, is it? It is me. Um, it is Paige. So Paige, you're in the middle. Lovely. Okay, yes. Correct. J.D. Whittaker. Great. Thank you very much. Well done. Now get your chance at your uh, bonuses. So these questions are about fictional doctors. Name the doctor from the description. Both a vampire and a doctor. What's the name of the adoptive father and leader of the Olympic Coven in the Twilight series by Stephanie Mayer? Carlisle. <laughs> no, um, ben Carlisle. That's it. So I, 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 what, what are you saying? Carlisle. Do we need the full name? Carlisle Cullen. Well done, Paige. Yep, that's good. You get your five points. Next qu bonus question. Who is the creator of The Grinch? Doctors. Zeus, yeah. Paige, again, very good on your doctors. And finally, name the 1997 song by Danish dance pop group Aqua based on an archaeologist from a successful adventure film franchise. Maybe Doctor Indi Indiana. <clears throat> Doctor Indiana Jones yeah. would be the Doctor. Doctor yeah. Indiana Jones. Yeah, Doctor Jones is correct. So uh, well done, all of you. That's the end of round one, and Jason is now going to do some adding up, which he's probably been doing as we went along, and give us some scores. And we'll see the um, or the scorecard is going to come up. Um, uh, but thank you all. This is working well, and thank you for um, thank you to Paige for putting the line under the the buzzing. This is the technical knowledge that if you're watching following people, very good. Okay, so this is quite close in it. We've got the alumni on forty five and the students just ahead at sixty. But as they always say, plenty to play for. So we shall um, we shall go on now to um, our round two, and again a starter. So no conferring. Which ancient civilization revered cats? Now, 
Royal alumni? I'm not sure I was first. I think I might be first. I but Paige is first. Okay, Paige is first. You, you, you just went full screen. Okay, so Paige, go for it. Hi, Egypt. Egypt is the correct answer. So let's see if you know your cats as well as your doctors. So your bonus questions. In human years, how old did the oldest known domestic pet cat live? So the oldest cat should be somewhere around 30. It was in, I thought it was in its early 30s, but I can't remember exactly yeah. how old. Are we not scaling this into cat years? It says human years. No, human years. So in, okay. <laughs> like, should we say 32, 33? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, 32. 32. It's actually 38 years. And I think because I gave the benefit of the doubt before, I'm not going to do it. But the answer was uh, Creme Puff in Austin, Texas, lived to a record breaking 38 years and three days. OK, your second bonus question. Who supposedly invented the first cat flap? Oh, I could not tell you. It's going yeah. to be some obscure royalty adjacent person. That's my intuition. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Uh, King Louis the Sixteenth. Yeah, nominate page. Yeah, yeah, Louis the Sixteenth. I'm afraid not. It's Isaac Newton. <laughs> His cat kept disturbing his work to let him out, so he created one, so he didn't have to get up to open the door. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I guess that's why we know about gravity because he <laughs> wasn't wasting time letting his cat in and out. And your third bonus, name a breed of cat that is genetically disposed to being cross-eyed. Uh, ooh. Like my first intuition is Siamese, but I, I don't know why. I know about breeds of cats which are genetically bred to be fat. Oh, sorry, you, by the, sorry, you can actually get more bonus, but if you, um, if you name more than one uh, breed, you'll get more points. More, more than one breed that is genetically predisposed to be cross eyed. Cross -eyed. Okay. Yeah. Domestic um, hair is a breed of cat. Sorry? <laughs> Domestic short hair is a breed of cat. British um, short hair is another breed. <laughs> um, should I say domestic short hair? And what do you say? Um, I think it was British short hair as well. I'd say say, say Siamese as yeah. well. Yeah. Siamese domestic short hair and English short hair. Okay. Well, the only one that you got right on my list is Siamese. So I will leave that up to Jason to decide how he's going to award <laughs> uh, the points for that. And we'll move on to our next uh, starter for 10. Where did the original 18-hole game of golf originate? So I think, yes, Royal alumni. I think it is, I think it is David this time. Go for it. I think I've got it wrong. St. Andrews? Uh, well, the answer is um, Scotland. And I think you're right. I think it is St. Andrews. So we'll definitely give you the 10 points because St. Andrews is in Scotland. So that is, that is fine. But I think you're right. I think it is that course. Okay, so three um, bonus questions on golf. Which astronaut, and you can confer, which astronaut famously played golf on the moon? Um, oh, was uh, it, is it Buzz Aldrin Buzz or Aldrin. Neil Armstrong? I would have gone for Buzz Aldrin. I don't know why. Who would I? <clears throat> Let's go for Buzz Aldrin then. I'm afraid not. Alan Shepard of oh, Apollo 14 is the right answer. Uh, your second bonus question, what's the real first name of the American golf player, Tiger Woods? And Any ideas? Oh. Uh, should we go Anthony, like Tony the Tiger? Maybe that's where it comes from. <laughs> Let's go, Tony. It's, it's, an, it's a nice guess. It's actually uh, Eldrick. I think I that's would such never a have guessed question. that. I'd know I, we should all know that, but we didn't know that. And I certainly didn't know that. And thirdly, where does the word golf come from? And this is this is which country? Oh. Any ideas? I've got nothing on golf, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, okay. Let's go, France. Um, Dave, David, you're guessing France. No, I'm afraid it's the Netherlands. Uh, the roots are the Dutch word for club. So I guess it must be the golf club rather than an association. Okay, let's move on to your next starter. No conferring. 
Who painted the girl with the pearl earring in the 17th century? And uh, students Crawley. Vermeer. Vermeer, exactly. And let's move on to your bonus questions, which are all um, uh, to do with uh, Vermeer. What movement was Vermeer associated with? The Dutch Golden Age? Yeah. I think what the answer here is the Dutch Baroque movement, but I think, Jason, I think we'll accept the Dutch Golden Age. I think that is that is fine. I can take a decision on that. And second bonus question, where was Vermeer born? And I'm going to have an exact answer for this. There's a city. Delft, maybe? He painted in Delft? Is it Delft? And that's where he lived. I don't know if that's where he was born. I, I, that's our safest guess. So yeah, Delft, Netherlands. Final answer? Yeah. Uh, it is Delft. Yeah. Well done, Paige. Well done, Paige. <laughs> and in the 2003 film, The Girl with the Pearl, Pearl Earring, who played Greet, the rumoured model of the painting? I didn't even Scarlett know. Johansson, I think. Scarlett Johansson? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Is the correct answer. Uh, well done on those uh, bonuses. And uh, plenty of time yet, alumni, as uh, Jeremy always says. Uh, and we move on to your next uh, starter for 10. In what year did the Indian mutiny begin? Royal alumni, I think, is the uh, was the first one in there. Um, D David, what are you going to say? Nineteen forty-five is not the right answer. So I'll pass that over to students. In what year did the Indian Mutiny begin? Eighteen fifty-seven. Correct, Aisha. I think. I think David. I think you were thinking about Indian independence. The slightly nineteen forty-seven, <laughs> which was much later and also wrong still. <laughs> <laughs> Only a hundred odd years. Anyway, so we move on to your bonus questions. And the mutiny is known by several other names. Can you name one? So this is one of your bonus questions. You can confer. Um, I was taught Indian Revolt of 1857. So yeah, Indian Revolt of 1857. Well, the that... Revolt of 1857. That's yeah. Uh... <laughs> Well, I, I, obviously, you know your Indian history, and I'm so the, the, the answers I've got are Sepoy Mutiny, Sepoy Rebellion, the Uprising, or the First War of Independence. But um, if that's what you were uh, taught, Aisha, I'm inclined to. <laughs> I <laughs> was taught about it in India. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we will. I think we will give you the points for that. <laughs> Um, and now uh, the second bonus question is: name one of the four most affected cities? Well, there's, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's Bombay, Calcutta. Uh, I, I don't know if they're the most affected. I'm going to go with Bombay. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. Bombay? Or Mumbai? Is not on my list. Oh, dear. And I think I might stick to that, actually. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I think that was, I think Delhi, Agra, Kanpur and luck now and I, I to me that you know does ring a bell so unless Jason overrules me I think I'll um, stick with that and who was the war fought against and I'm going to go for, I, I want the exact uh, thing for this I mean I'm pretty Which sure it's the, East no, it's the East Indian Company yeah East India Company exactly exactly British East India Company um, so well done on those bonuses. And uh, we'll come back now to our starter again, uh, no conferring. In what year was the League of Nations formed? Chalice students? I believe that would be 1919. It's not the right answer, I'm afraid. So over to alumni. Nobody would, okay, Probert alumni? 1923. I'm afraid that's not a right answer. The answer I have here is 1920 as a result of the Paris Peace Conference that ended the First World War. So we'll move on to our next um, starter question, which was, when were Kellogg's cornflakes first invented?
1870? It is not the right answer. Royal alumni? 1906. Um, 1906, I think, you know, that is, it's 1896, so that's within 10 years, so I'm going to give that to you since I was quite lax with the students earlier, so I'll give you that, and also because it's quite fun to have Thank some you. questions on cornflakes coming up. And we need it. <laughs> so here are your bonus questions. For which Apollo mission did the astronauts bring Kellogg's cereal for their breakfasts? Wow. We've got a few to choose from. Pick a number. <laughs> Anybody, any strong preferences? Let's go 11. Is the correct answer. Well done. Good guess. The cereal was mixed up with fruit and formed into cubes since eating with milk was impossible without gravity. Interesting bit of trivia for you. In uh, your second bonus question, in 1775, Dr. Samuel Johnson wrote that oats were a grain which in England is generally given to horses, but in blank supports the people. To which country was he referring? Scotland. Scotland. <laughs> is the correct answer. And your final bonus, what were the Kellogg brothers trying to make when they accidentally invented cornflakes? Oh, um, maybe popcorn? What do you guys think? What else would they be trying to make with corn? Corn flour? Popcorn? What do we think? Any ideas? Go. Should I go popcorn? Go with, go with popcorn. Go with popcorn. Yeah. I'm afraid it's not the right answer. And just this isn't to give her any points, but Paige looks like she's she first. Do you know yeah. what it is, Paige? Well, I, I, you know what? I'm going to get the precise food stuff wrong, but... Um, I do know the story, um, which involves um, uh, which involves the Battle Creek Sanitarium uh, run by the Kellogg brothers, and they were trying to make some sort of food stuff that was so bland um, that it would not uh, inf inflame your senses in any way. Um, okay, and they well, that, that's that's the poetic version. Um, the answer I've got on the card is they're trying to make granola. <laughs> but anyway, obviously, good, lots of good research done there by Jason. OK, well, well done, um, alumni, for um spirited bonus round. And we're back on our next uh, starter for 10. Not a very hard one. Who wrote the musical Cats? Crawley students. That would be Andrew Lloyd Webber. That would be Andrew Lloyd Webber. Well done. And we'll move on to the bonus questions, which you can confer. Which author's poetry inspired the musical Cats? T.S. Eliot. Dominic Page, T.S. Eliot. Very good is the right answer. Your second bonus question. Which Lloyd Webber musical is based on P.G. Woodhouse's novels? It's the one that about the Lady Phantom. Uh, oof, what did she write? The one about the dog. The one about the dog. Um, no, it's um, the boy who. In the nighttime one, or is that because that's PG? I know that's PG Wodehouse. I don't know whether it's An Andrew Lloyd. Mm, yeah. Curious, 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 curious. Case. Case. It's, it's not, not a musical. No, 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 no. Was that not musical? I don't think. Okay, I'm gonna have to hurry you. Which you, you go giving? for it if you want. Yeah, I might as well. Um, curious incident of dog at the nighttime. Uh, no, it's uh, by Jeeves. By Jeeves. I know, I, I haven't heard of it either, but anyway, that is a Lloyd Webber musical. And your final bonus question, name one of the two Lloyd Webber musicals that started out as rock opera concept albums. This would be Joseph and the Technicolor, the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. I think that's one of them. Yep. Yeah. On that page. Yep, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. <laughs> I'm afraid not. That wasn't written by Andrew Lloyd Webber. He wrote really? uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. No, that's what I'm doing. Mm. Yeah, of course. And that was based, you know, well, they, they, they did write the, 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 the rock concept album yeah. is um, Jesus Christ Superstar. And the other one was a beta. Okay. And we move on to our next um, starter for 10, no conferring. 
Which former British Prime Minister founded the Metropolitan Police? Royal alumni. Robert Peel. Is the correct answer. Very good. This is hotting up now. And here are your bonus questions. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to, this is what year was the Metropolitan Police founded? And I'm going to give this to you within 10 years. Mm. So, anyone got Christchurch knowledge? Because they wrote no peel on the door, didn't they, at the bottom of the Great Staircase? When was that? <laughs> that was protest it's, against the police. 1830s, I think. 1832. Now, any other advance? Other ways we go with that? Is that your Eight, final answer? 1832. Very good. 1829. So very close. So I'm going to give you the five points for that. Well done. Um, which, what city does the Metropolitan Police largely cover? So they don't cover the City of London because that's City of London Police. So it must be Greater Western? London, which is yeah. the city. Yeah. yeah. Is that your, that's your answer? Greater London, yeah. Do we agree? What, yeah. Or unless it's Westminster. But they, co they cover more than just Westminster. I know they just okay. don't cover the City of London. I'm going to go Greater London. And you're absolutely right. Good, good, Captain. Knowledge, yes, excluding the City of London. Um, and finally, the Met's headquarters located on Victoria Bankman in Westminster, um, formerly known as the Curtis Green Building, and before that, Whitehall Police Station is known as what? New Scotland, New Yard, Scotland yes. Yard. Yeah. New yeah. Scotland Yard. New Scotland Yard. Is the correct answer. And well done on all those uh, bonuses. Very well done. That's the end of round two. So um, Jason is going to put up the scoreboard and we will see both of those. So uh, uh, 95 for the alumni, 135 for the students. So we shall move on to uh, round three and another starter. Which was the first Agatha Christie novel published in 1919? Probert alumni. It's The Mysterious Affair at Styles. Very good. I'd never have guessed that. That's very good. So you have your bonus questions, and it sounds like you might be an Agatha Christie fan, so you're in with the chance here. The old cataract hotel in which Agatha Christie spent a lot of time is in which Egyptian city? Okay, I'm looking at you now. I don't know where she went on holiday. <laughs> Just guess Cairo. I, mean, I, I knew it was Egypt, but yeah, should we go sure. Cairo? Yeah, let's go Cairo. I'm afraid not, it's Aswan. Um, so it was, uh, you know, much further up up the Nile. So the can we say Dan? <laughs> you can say Dan, and that's a really terrible joke. I'm tempted to deduct points for that, but I, I won't. <laughs> I won't be so brutal. Okay. Um, and in which novel does Christy mention herself by name? Oh dear. Okay. Any ideas? So, so, so promising your early knowledge of Agatha Christie. Okay. You're going to guess, guess the title of the novel? Nominate Probert. Hercule Poirot's Last Case. No, I'm afraid not. It's The Body in the Library. And uh, finally, which Christie play is the longest running in the world? And for a further bonus, in what year did it open in London? Well, it's The Mousetrap. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, the last chat for sure. Has has there been an anniversary recently? A significant one? Maybe. I feel yeah, like it was a, was it eighty something years recently, or was it longer than that? I don't think it's longer than that. Um, I think it's immediately it's it's post war. It's post nineteen forty eight. Um, Shall we go forty eight or forty nine then? Maybe 1950. Okay, 1950. So the the mouse trap, 1950. The mouse trap. It's 1952. So I think we'll I think we'll we'll uh, give you that. 
uh, particularly since I've just had a message from, um, so that well done on, the, on those bonuses. And I've had a message from our score adjacent to say he Googled the Android Weber question. Paige was correct. So you're going to get the five points. So well done. I, I knew, I knew, I, I know my <laughs> I didn't really, I didn't realize it was a rock concept. But anyway, we'll, we'll, uh, you get your five points. So well done for that. Okay. And we're going to have another um, starter for 10. In British history, who was the last Stuart monarch? Charles II. Is not the right answer. Um, so um, for students, who was, was um, Paige? Um, James II. No, it wasn't James II. It was uh, Queen Anne, who died in 1714 with no living children. So George of Hanover succeeded her beginning the uh, Hanoverian period. OK, let's move on to our next um, starter for 10. Very Oxford question here. Who designed the Sheldonian Theatre? Royal Wren. alumni. Christopher Wren. Is the correct answer. And now you've got your three bonus questions. What subject uh, was Wren professor of, excuse me, at Oxford? I have no idea, team. That's a, oh. Architecture? <laughs> well, seems what to other, what other I think it's it going to be something left field, like philosophy or something. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to have Let's, to hurry you. What, what what are you going? What with? do we What do we think? Let's go. I'm going to, um, I'm going to go great. Like, Let's go yeah. great. Why yeah. not? I'm afraid not. You're right. There is something random. Astronomy. I mean, oh. it's incredible, isn't it? People are such kind of they Renaissance are. figures. You could be a professor of astronomy and and be so brilliant at architecture. Um, Christopher Wren. This is your second bonus question. Christopher Wren designed the main tower of Christ Church. Uh, Oxford, what's its nickname? Is it Tom Tower? It's Tom Quad, right? So, oh, Tom, um, Tom, yeah, I think that's right. Tom, it's not Tom, Big Tom, is it? No, is Tom, that your Tom answer? Tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got Tom yeah. Tower? Tom Tower. Tom Tower is the right answer. And in which Cambridge College uh, is the Wren Library? Hmm. Mm. It could be John's. John's has got the wedding cake, hasn't it? Is that where the, is that? Should we go St. John's? Go for it. St. John's? I'm afraid not, it's Trinity. Okay, um, but uh, some useful points for you there. And we'll move on to our next starter for 10. What is the, what was, sorry, what was the Julian calendar? Chalice students. Would that be the 10 month calendar prior to, uh, sorry, 11th month, 11th, dear me, the 11 month calendar, including July? It's not exactly as I've got, but I think that is right, unless um, uh, I get uh, Jason completely contradicts me. I think that's fine. It says here, reform of the Roman calendar introduced by uh, Julius Caesar in 46 BC. So, okay, Jason hasn't come in to say that's completely wrong, so you can have that um, starter. And our bonus questions. In what century did the Julian calendar cease to be the standard calendar in the UK? In the UK. Um, when was the... You're a classic student, Paige. <laughs> this is far beyond my, my area. Um, I will say the 10th century. I, Unless you want to say something better. I um, mean, just thinking about like major changes in English history, I think Norman Conquest, you know, the French then maybe would have brought it in after oh, like ending. Is it Roman. replaced by the Gregorian calendar? Is that a different one? Yeah, yeah. that's our calendar. And the, the, but the Gregorian, then, but I'm not sure. So when was the Norman Con Conquest map quit? 1066. Oh. Sorry? 1066. Oh, 11th century. century so 11th, we just say 11th century? Yes. Okay, 11th century. Is the wrong answer. It's the 18th century. Oh. It was oh. And uh, what was the calendar intended to do? 
the Julian. The Julian, yeah. Yeah, it was to um, which cut? Which calendar? The Julian calendar. Julian calendar. Uh, it was, I believe, to um, regularize like festival days. Uh, I think it was to make it more consistent because it, days get getting shifted in the old calendar. So it made it consistent year to year by adding a leap day. Is this long description? Yeah. Um, is it also partly just a... Um, I think it was also a power move by Julius. Yeah, just so that his name was in the calendar. Okay, yeah. nominate, nominate Paige, do your explanation. Yes, so I think that it was to make the calendar more consistent year to year and thus more useful for like scheduling things because previously the calendar changed. Because I was quite fluid on your starter answer I think I'm going to be stricter with this I'm afraid it's to approximate the solar year which may be what you were intending but it's not what you actually said I'm afraid that's all I said it's very okay fair. and then our third and final uh, bonus is what was it replaced with oh, the Gregorian calendar yeah. yeah the Gregorian calendar is the correct answer uh well done and now we move on to our next starter starter for 10 What's the name of the devil in Goethe's Faust? Royal alumni. Is it Mephistopheles? It is absolutely Mephistopheles. And actually, looking at the way I'm lit here, it's slightly, it's slightly demonic. I think I haven't put enough lights on, but never mind. So your bonuses are all um, diabolically difficult. Do you see what I did there? I didn't, they're not really. Where does Faust part one begin? And you can confer. I, I exhausted my Faust knowledge with that first question. Um, where does it begin? I mean, it's probably going to begin in, in hell or earth or heaven or something like that, I reckon. Should we go hell? Mm, I lean towards that. Hell. <laughs> Sorry, heaven. <laughs> oh, So close, so close. Should have thought it would go are. down, not up, but yeah. there we go. And your second bonus, what language was Goethe's first poem written in? German, German? I would have thought. Well, I'm, uh, German seems too obvious, doesn't it? it yeah. Hmm. But, but do we have a better answer? No. <laughs> Let's go German. English. Yeah. Surprising, isn't it? And your third bonus, in which free city of the Holy Roman Empire was Goethe from? I mean, this, I've been to a house which was in Frankfurt, but should, should we go Frankfurt? What's the significance of free? <clears throat> free city. Hmm. Frankfurt? Is that your final answer, David? Um, yeah. That's the correct answer. So your memory, I don't know what the significance of free is, but um, obviously useful for the people, the citizens of Frankfurt in that era. And let's move on to our next uh, starter for 10. So where was Mary Shelley when she began writing Frankenstein? Royal alumni? Dublin is not the right answer. So let me pass over to students. Uh, Crawley, students, you seem to be muted. Yes, hello. Will you hello. accept the description of a vacation house on a lake with various other literary individuals? No, <laughs> but nice try. No, I wanted the the uh, I wanted the exact uh, location, and the actual answer is Lake Geneva in Switzerland. I think it's well enough known to to the. But she was with lots of other, <laughs> other people, so you, you knew you roughly, but not good enough, I'm afraid. So let's move on to our next uh, starter for ten. What were the international sanitary conferences? What were the international sanitary conferences? Okay, Shalis, I think. Yeah, Matthew? I believe that was part of <clears throat> the United Nations plan 
um, after World War II to help global recovery? I'm afraid not. They, they, that's, they were not that. So over to alumni. Anyone want to hazard a guess? The International Sanitary Conferences. Royal alumni. Bill Gates' attempt to get toilets in the majority world. They could, they're both very good guesses, but they weren't. There were 14 international meetings organized in response to the spread of cholera, plague, and yellow fever in the 19th century. First one organized in 1851. Okay, let's move on to our next um, starter, a little bit closer to home, this one. Name the two types of animals on St. Anne's coat of arms. Royal alumni. Uh, lions and ravens are both right very good i'd have thought um beaver because i remember seeing that um you know up and about but um yeah lion and raven is correct so here are your bonus questions change one letter in the answer to these definitions to get the name of a principal of st anne's so you, you, you want to change one letter in the answer to get the name of a pr former principal of st anne's a flat transport structure commonly made of wood and lifted by a forklift. That's Claire Pally, right? Pallet yeah. Pally? Claire Pally. Very good. Your next bonus, the last name of a British multi-award winning actress known for her roles in films such as Philomena, Notes on the Scandal, and as M in James Bond. That's so that's going to be Ruth Deitch. Ruth Deitch. Yes. Very good, you know yeah. your principles. And a web search engine owned and operated by Microsoft. That's Edge is what they use. Or oh, Bing maybe as well. Bing is the web search engine. Who could that be? Tim Goddamn. Helen King. King. Helen King. King. <laughs> Glad you got that one right because I'm pretty <laughs> sure she's watching. So that is right. Helen King. Very good. You did all got all those bonuses there. Uh, you know your St. Anne's principles. So that brings us to the end of round three, and um, Jason's going to give us the scores. So, oh, look, there's been quite um, a turnaround in that. 170 to the alumni, 155 to the students. This is hotting up. Excellent. Very good. So let us move into round four and our start of a 10, no conferring. In what city was American pop superstar Madonna born? Royal is it, alumni. Is it Austin, Texas? It was not Austin, Texas. Anyone from students have an idea? In what city was uh, Madonna born? American city. Well, no, what city was she born? Uh, Chalice students. Was it Tennessee? It was not Tennessee. It was Bay City, Michigan. And I'm going to move on to our next um, start of a 10. What was the real name of the French fashion designer Coco Chanel? Real name of Coco Chanel? Crawley, students. Uh, Colette. Good guess, but I'm afraid not. Alumni, do you want to hazard a guess? Probert, alumni. Gabrielle? Yes, is the right answer. You sounded so doubtful, but that you dug deep. I didn't know that. That's <laughs> well done. So goodness knows how she ended up. Colette was a very good guess, but goodness knows how she ended up being called Coco. But anyway. So bonus questions. Uh, um, what is the name for a designer of hats? Um, it's a, a milliner, isn't it? Yeah, a milliner. A milliner. Uh, I think so. Milliner is the right answer. <clears throat> Two, an archaic term for someone who repairs shoes. Also, the name for a type of fruit dessert is a what? So it's an archaic term for someone who repairs shoes. Also, a kind of fruit dessert. So I think it's cobbler, like peach cobbler, but I didn't know cobbler was archaic for a shoe mender. But I'm going to go cobbler. Or, or um, maybe not. Hold on, Gina. Um, is it something like snog? 
And how does that work for the fruit dessert? That's the bit that's confusing. It doesn't, does it? No. Uh, okay, it's got to be that. cobbler, like peach cobbler, surely. Okay. Cobbler. Is is the correct answer. And I won't make any jokes about cobblers. Yeah, cobbler is a, a shoe repair. <laughs> and um, bonus question number three. A woman who sews or makes a living by sewing is also known as a what? Seamstress. Um, seamstress, yeah. Um, is that what you're going for? But we're just conferring still. Conferring. Um, Any advance? Hmm. It must be I seamstress. I can't think of any other terms. Go for it. Seamstress, final answer. Is the correct answer. Yeah. Um, so well done on those uh, <clears throat> bonuses. And we go back to our starter now. So which British artist created a series of works containing animals preserved in formaldehyde? Damien Hurst. Is the correct answer. Um, so more uh, bonuses for the alumni. Which British contemporary artist from Margate in Kent created the installation piece titled My Bed in 1998. Tracy Emin. Tracy Emin. Yeah. Tracy Emin. Is yeah. the correct answer. And your second bonus, which Victorian British artist notable for painting over 32,000 works in his lifetime, mostly of seascapes and landscapes, was also portrayed in film by the English actor Timothy Spall? Is it Constable? Turner. Turner. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Turner. Uh, Turner. We're going to go Turner. Yeah. It is Turner. Uh, we should have, should have made you say all his names. Joseph Mallord William Turner. Mm. And your final uh, bonus question. What is the name of the piece of music about a city in the Middle East created by British artist William Blake, often performed at the BBC's <laughs> Last Night of the Proms? It's, it's Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yeah, it's Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yeah. yeah. Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is the <clears throat> correct answers. Um, not hugely difficult bonuses, were there, those ones? Okay, and now our next uh, starter for 10. What vitamin do most people commonly associate with oranges? Crawley vitamin students. Vitamin C. Exactly, um, vitamin, vitamin or vitamin C. And your bonus um, questions now. In the fairy tale, what poison fruit does the evil queen use on Snow White? It's an apple. 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 Uh, but what is it? Are they going to want red apple? This is red apple. <laughs> yeah, red apple. Okay, Aisha, very good. Just says apple, but I love the extra background <laughs> detail. <laughs> Certainly from the Walt Disney cartoon, wasn't it? Uh, your second bonus, which artist sang the song Watermelon Sugar? Harry Styles. Harry Styles is the right answer. And okay, the, the others had some easy questions. This is pretty easy. Which city is nicknamed the Big Apple? New York. New York City. Is New York. Well done. Got all those bonuses <laughs> right. Okay. So our next starter for 10. I think everyone's going to be buzzing for this one. What's the name of the St. Anne's alumni magazine? And uh, if you get this wrong, David, you're in trouble. What is it? It's the ship. And a uh, shout out to Judith Bridal Hall as the excellent editor of the ship. <laughs> so you get the points and you're sucking up at the same time. Very good. OK, so your bonus questions now. Um, the following writers are all alumni of St Anne's. Name them from their works. So the first one, the first um, works are The Bone Season and The Priory of the Orange Tree. It's Samantha Shannon. That's the correct answer. And the uh, second bonus question, Moon Tiger and the Ghost of Thomas Kemp. Nominate Probert. That's Penelope Lively. It is Penelope Lively, or as some mm. friends of mine children called her when I gave them the house of Norham Gardens, they called her Pennylope Liverly. <laughs> very, very nice, such a distinguished writer. And finally, Bridget Jones's diary. Ellen Fielding. Yeah. Ellen yeah. Fielding. In my year at St Anne's, very nice person. Okay, now we move on to our next, and well done on all those bonuses, and our next start of the 10. What is the name of the creator of the American television series, Buffy the Vampire Slayer? 
Royal alumni. Joss Whedon. Is the right answer. Okay, and we've got um, three bonus questions. So I hope you've watched the series as well as knowing about um, Joss Whedon. What's the name of Buffy's mentor and father figure who works in the library at her school? It's uh, Rupert Giles or Giles. <laughs> yeah, that is correct. Second bonus, what's the name of the English actor who played Giles? It's Anthony Head or Anthony Stewart Head. <laughs> it's the kind of things like you should be slightly embarrassed at getting them so exactly right, but you are correct. Mm -hmm. And the final, final bonus is Alison Lee Hannigan played which character in the TV series? Willow Rosenberg. <laughs> You've really watched that series. I love it. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Well done. And we'll move on to our next starter for 10. Which English monarch was the son of Margaret Beaufort? Crawley students. Henry VIII. Is not the right answer, I'm afraid. Alumni. Probert. Henry the seventh. Is Henry the seventh is the right answer, and you get some more bonuses now. Um, excluding the annulled marriage that was a marriage that she never recognised to Don Delapole before the age of three, who was Margaret Beaufort's third husband? These are a bit, little getting a bit trickier, aren't they? These bonuses, I think, in this round. Any ideas? You got something, Rebecca? No, it's not coming. I'm really sorry. Any any guesses? Or oh, I'll hurry you on. Okay. Henry the Sixth. No, uh, Thomas Lord Stanley. Okay, which two Cambridge colleges did Margaret Beaufort found? Well, they've they've got to be old. <laughs> um, what do we think? Which are the oldest, John? John's is Jesus that old? It's so we're, we're looking at late late fifteenth century, um, John, mid to late fifteenth century. John's is about the right age, I would say. Uh, and another one, okay. John's and Jesus. Uh, no, it's St John's and Christ's. So I'm going to leave it up to uh, Jason whether he awards any points for getting um, St John's or whether he wanted both of them. And your third bonus, uh, which cities was Margaret Beaufort Countess of? Mm. Yeah, no, I can see you, you're shaking your heads. These are w tough. These Winchester ones. and Chichester. Good guesses, but Richmond and Derby. <laughs> OK, so we'll move on to... Um, our next uh, starter, and this is our um, final uh, starter and bonus round. Um, so this is the starter, and, and just a reminder, actually, before we go to the um, to this starter, for anybody who's um, watching this at home, this is a fundraiser. So if you've been enjoying it, please show your gratitude by uh, donating. And uh, so this is our final um, starter for ten. Which empire was formed from the eastern remains of the Roman Empire after its collapse? Uh, the Byzantine okay. Empire. Say that again, sorry. Uh, the Byzantine Empire. Exactly. The right answer is the right answer. Well done. And uh, we've got three questions now on uh, the Byzantine Empire. In 555 AD, the empire reached its peak in size. Who was the emperor at the time? Justinian, I think. Justinian uh, the first. Uh, I trust you sound confident. Um, yeah, not me, Lucan. Correct. Uh, Correct. Good, good team. Good captain decision, I should. <laughs> that is the right answer. It is Justinian. Uh, and your second question is, what type of racing was very popular in the Byzantine Empire? Chariot racing. Chariot racing. <laughs> it was. And uh, can you and can you name the, uh, the 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 main teams who competed against each other? Uh, 
white, blues, yellows, I'm, reds. Greens, I'm just torturing you, but I think was it was it the, the greens and the blues, something like something that. Something like that, yeah. Um, okay, and uh, actually, <laughs> well, what was the capital city of the Byzantine Empire? Yeah, would it have been called Constantinople at the time? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Constant, surely it's Constantinople. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Constantinople. Constantinople is the correct answer. So you did very well on those bonuses. And um, I don't know what the final scores are, but I think as we um, round them all up, I think it'll be um, quite a close result. And that was a very interesting contest going backwards and forwards between the teams um, as we go along. So let's, um, this is the final score. So 285 to the alumni and 205 to the students. And that was a very spirited contest. And uh, although it went backwards and forwards, it is, it's a decisive result. So we can't have any of those awful post-mortems after quizzes where people go, actually, the right answer was bloody, bloody, blah, because I think it's a, a decisive result. But I think you all did uh, really well indeed. I think... Um, I think Jeremy Paxman and now uh, my colleague on the state program, Al Rajan, are safe in their roles as university challenge hosts. But I really enjoyed doing it and uh, meeting you all online. And so we're just, um, we can round up. And just to mention that it's giving day and the whole point of this exercise, as well as for people to show up their knowledge or betray their ignorance, was to uh, raise money for the important work um, that St Anne's does, and we heard about the important areas that they're um, giving areas, that, and particularly in order to help people from disadvantaged backgrounds to be able to come to St Anne's. So please give generously, and thank you all. I don't have an applause button, but I'd like to um, offer my congratulations to uh, the winning team, the alumni, and also to the, oh look, there's lots of <laughs> hands coming up as virtual applause. And so it's goodbye from the alumni and goodbye from the students and goodbye from me. Goodbye.